This is Troy Herchibis, the Canadian who built a suit of armor that could fend off grizzly bears. Although best known for his exploits in the 1996 film Project Grizzly, that documentary only scratched the surface of the many remarkable, and often questionable, inventions to come out of Troy's brain. In the years since Project Grizzly, Troy came up with ideas such as fire paste, the angel light, and an advanced version of his bear suit designed for use in modern warfare, amongst many other inventions ranging from the highly practical to the pseudoscientific. Of course, this earned Troy the reputation of an oddball mountain man type in the media, which is believed to have hindered any serious consideration of his talents. Today on Anomaly, we're diving deep into the life of Troy Herchibis to see just how workable his theories really were. Troy James Herchibis was born in Scarborough, Ontario on November 17, 1963. His father was a craftsman who enjoyed building full-scale models of Iroquois villages. Troy picked up his earliest skills in planning and designing from helping his dad, gaining an appreciation for an outdoorsy lifestyle in the process. He was a fan of Elvis Presley and found scientific inspiration in both Nikola Tesla and Albert Einstein. And so, encouraged by his father, Troy ventured into the Canadian wilderness on a series of expeditions to study nature up close. One of these trips proved to be a life-changing experience of a most unusual kind. It was the summer of 1984. Troy was gold panning in British Columbia when he found himself alone at the base camp, though not completely. Troy recounted that he felt a presence stalking him for a few days leading up to the fateful incident where a white-chested grizzly bear confronted him face to face. The bear, who he later referred to as the old man, didn't immediately tear Troy to shreds, which gave him a chance to escape. Drawing his weapon, Troy had a standoff with the bear before shouting, quote, Take what you want, but I'll take both of these knives and I'll shove them right up your ass. Much to his own surprise, Troy got away. But as he recounted in Project Grizzly, the experience would take Troy's life on a radically different course. Though Troy learnt as much as he could about grizzly behavior from books, this didn't satiate his curiosity. But he also recognized from his first-hand experience that studying them in the wild would be challenging due to their territorial and aggressive nature. At first, Troy had hoped to invent a new kind of bear spray to help hikers defend themselves in such a situation. But because he would have to be up close to a bear to actually test it, his attention shifted to thinking of ways he could safely do so. It would be a few years, though, before inspiration struck him from an unlikely source. At the age of 24, Troy began studying natural sciences at Fleming College. His interest in bears continued to grow, but Troy was at a loss for how he could really get to know the animal. His solution would be most unusual, a suit of armor inspired by the titular character of the film Robocop. Troy spent the next few years developing an idea for the armor that would come to be known as the Ursus suit. He consulted with scientists and other experts at his college and from across the country to figure out the best plan for developing such an invention. Friends and family encouraged him, and can be seen in several videos helping Troy test the suit by driving vehicles into him, or pummeling him with 2x4s. Troy went through multiple iterations of the suit in the early years, tinkering with it along the way to produce better results. Most of the early bear suits were built out of discarded hockey equipment, but as time went on, Troy refined his plans to include much more durable material. One advantage Troy had came from his day job. He owned his own scrap metal business at the time, giving him access to supplies that would be ordinarily difficult to find. In 1988, he got his first taste of attention from the British Columbia government after his early exploits were reported on in a local newspaper. One official wrote to him stating, quote, your reliance on martial arts training is more appropriate to the streets of Vancouver than the wilds of northern BC. Troy brushed this off without a second thought. Troy had gone through at least five prototypes by 1989, with the latest costing about $26,000. To test the Mark V, Troy went down to the local dump to confront a black bear, which of course are far more timid than a full-sized grizzly. Because of this, the black bear turned tail rather than attempting to maul Troy. Disappointed, but undeterred, Troy began Mark VI the following year. It was here where his vision truly came together. Troy once described the suit as being covered in an ultra-durable rubber, titanium plating, chainmail, hard plastic, more titanium plating, and finally more hard plastic in that order. 
The result was that even a balloon would be safe inside the armor, with its protective qualities promising for human use. Troy began thinking of the research the suit could permit, including rigging grizzly dens with cameras during hibernation to catch never-before-seen footage like a mother giving birth. Troy cataloged his early experiments in the first of a handful of self-published books he'd write over the years, entitled White Tape, an authentic behind-the-scenes look at Project Grizzly. In the early 90s, Troy met his future wife Lori in a North Bay donut shop, a common hangout for him and his friends following suit testing. Despite thinking he may have been insane, Lori wound up becoming one of Troy's biggest supporters. Because of her strong ties to the area, Troy himself would soon settle in North Bay and become infamous to locals as the Bear Suit Man. In a few short years, however, Troy's legend would spread across the whole of Canada, thanks to a film producer who read about his exploits in the North Bay Nugget and offered to finance a feature-length documentary. 1995. A string of bear attacks near Lake Louise, Alberta prompts Troy to confront the animal in the Mark VI Ursus suit, which he has airlifted in for the mission. This was the focus of Project Grizzly, the documentary by Peter Lynch which brought Troy international fame. Though pursuit was unsuccessful due to the suit's immobility on mountain terrain, these shortcomings showed Troy what to improve on. Most important would be the ability to move much more fluidly. Troy even joked he'd be able to drive a car wearing the next iteration. But although the successful documentary was well received, Troy felt it was a hindrance in being taken seriously. He believed it, quote, portrayed me as a crazy guy in a funny suit to a lot of people. It didn't show the science that I wanted it to. Even his wife, who loved the flick, didn't see it as entirely accurate. Quote, I think they portrayed him much different than the man he is. For instance, he's constantly smoking in the movie. Every scene, it seems he's got a cigarette. He doesn't smoke that much. Still, the film opened the door for more media appearances and chances to earn consulting fees for similar projects. Troy Herdebees built this homemade suit, which he believes makes him indestructible. And now, he's out to prove it. Let's put him back. He'll face a 2,300-pound car that's swinging from an 80-foot crane. I just waited for the cue man to say, it's released. And when I heard the snap and the car coming, all I could see is, you know, this red kind of a, a glow with a black bumper. And uh, I'm, I'm going... <sighs> It hits full contract, like that. Now, it blows me back through the wall. Then I hit, bang. And the last thing that I really felt before I could see the, you know, the stars and everything was uh, bricks falling on me, little pin drops. Troy was awarded the Ig Nobel Prize for Safety Engineering in 1998 by the Annals of Improbable Research magazine. This satirical award recognizes, quote, Achievements that first make people laugh, and then make them think. Despite the comedic nature of the prize, it gave Troy the chance to present at Harvard. These lectures, as he called them, became a point of pride he'd often bring up in later interviews. The same year, Troy began working on plans for yet another version of the Ursus suit, the G-Man. The G stood for Genesis. G-Man was to be coated in an experimental substance called Hertzy, a spray that imparted bulletproof qualities superior to Kevlar. To demonstrate the strength of the Hertzy uh, in its simplistic form, uh, I just took a woman's makeup pad made of straight 100% cotton, very weak in its natural form. Yet if you take one of these same pads and you coat it with Hertzy and you compress it in a press and leave it sit for 24 hours, you've got a strength that is beyond comprehension. I mean, this should theoretically be able to lift up a car. When he unveiled Hertzy to the audience at Harvard, Troy admitted, quote, I don't know why it works, it just does. An article in New Scientist explained that research had set Troy back at least $100,000 since he began, and that as a result he had lost his scrap metal processing business. Since Troy had to claim bankruptcy, the bear suits were amongst the many assets repossessed by the bank. This meant that Troy had to rent his own suit at a cost of $500 whenever he made television appearances, which were common at the time. But this wouldn't keep Troy down. Something, so please welcome our newest hero and his bear suit, Ursus Mark VI, ladies and gentlemen, Troy Herchemies! 
Oh, you're looking good. Oh, man, it's so good to see that bear suit live. Now, you were, uh, you were, uh, you were attacked by a bear. Uh, when I was a young man, yes. And, and you, uh, you became obsessed with these creatures, and under the theory of a kind of a shark cage, you decided to build this, is that right? Yes, I went in there for a bear behavioral specialist and to study them up close and personal, you need one of these. And, and how did you, <laughs> you sure do, you need one of these too. Uh, and you, uh, you tested it by getting shot with a shotgun, and you also got hit by a truck going how fast? Uh, 50 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Which even in America is pretty fast. So uh, what we're gonna do is, my partner's dressed up like a bear here and he's pretty tough. So why don't you uh, put the, uh, the top of the helmet on and we'll uh, put you in place here. And then see if you can uh, take on my, uh, my partner Teller here. He's one tough bear. When we love someone here at Sin City, we sing and dance about it. So Dr. Stockdale, take us to the woods. A 2001 article on Improbable.com wrote that Troy went up against a trained Kodiak bear using the Ursus suit. Apparently the bear was at first intimidated before realizing it was much bigger, at which point its handler called it off before the bear could attack. Troy recounted, quote, I entered that grizzly's cage in the suit with no fear whatsoever, and it was a surprise even to the trainer that she ended up being that terrified of me. She cowered in the corner and showed all the signs a bear shows when it's submissive. The animal was later able to tear up some of the rubber on the unmanned suit, but was unable to fully destroy it. Despite not being hit by the bear while in the suit, Troy felt this experience gave him the proper direction he needed to begin working on the next version. His plans included making the suit more flexible using specialized chainmail designed to resist great white shark attacks. Troy hoped the result would be a suit that a bear could recognize as human shape, rather than the colossus that had impeded his attempts to get close. Later that year, it came out that for 18 months, Troy believed he was being watched. He claimed to have had his phone lines bugged and even said that his lab had been broken into. Troy brought up how he was once working in his lab well into the wee hours of the morning when he was approached by two well-dressed Arab men who expressed interest in his work. They were particularly impressed by his so-called Superman suit, which used electricity as a catalyst to render it impregnable by conventional weapons. The men took turns lobbing questions at Troy, including how well it worked in a battlefield. Handing him $5,000 in cash, they asked for Troy to produce a full-size prototype for $200,000. This would be the last time Troy would see them in person, so he says. After getting the necessary materials to begin working on that prototype, Troy returned to his lab to see that he had been robbed. Apparently, the thieves made off with part of the Superman suit but it was a year before Troy found a possible lead. According to him, he saw one of the men on a news report about the identities of the 9-11 hijackers. Troy claims to have called this in as a tip to the FBI, but was met with attitude over the phone. Quote, I basically got a snotty, obtuse idiot stick who treated me as if I was some kind of a nutcase. When pressed by the media over this possible connection, the FBI refused to comment. Improbable research noted that multiple security experts found Troy's anecdote plausible given the time frame. But despite Troy's fears, there is yet to be any evidence of enemy factions using a Superman suit on the battlefield. Armor suits weren't the only invention Troy worked on over the years. He had also developed his own type of flame-resistant material called fire paste. The inspiration came from watching the Space Shuttle Columbia tragedy unfold on television. One of Firepaste's best qualities was its ability to dissipate heat, which Troy routinely talked up as, quote, defying physics. He said that over 17 years, he had gone through at least 3,600 pores of the material before finding the right balance needed to make it heatproof. But Troy also said he came up with the solution after about 12 hours of research on the internet. The materials used were common household goods that most anyone would have. One such ingredient is said to have been Diet Coke. Despite the best efforts of internet investigators, however, the complete makeup of Troy's fire paste remains a mystery. And unfortunately, Troy seldom obtained patents on his work, believing they were useless without the money to defend them should his ideas be stolen. Troy showed off the thermal resistance of fire paste on Daily Planet back in 2003. I should have been dead. Science tells me I should have been dead. Whoa. The substance cooled right back down after just 20 seconds. 
Troy boasted that not only was the substance much more heat resistant than titanium, but that it cost just pennies to produce. Quote, I could coat the belly of the NASA space shuttle with fire paste for $20,000 instead of the six million cost for them to put tiles on it. It can stand up to the heat of re-entry in the Earth's atmosphere, and then they can simply wash it off. Troy also hoped to entice the insurance industry with a demonstration where he built two small houses, covered one in fire paste, and then lit them on fire to prove his theory. He even went so far as to say his material could have mitigated the 9-11 tragedy. In 2004, Troy revealed the Magnetic Blast Cushion, a Kevlar-based defense system against IEDs. The idea was that strong magnets would connect these hardy cushions to military vehicles to absorb the impact of blunt force. Troy hoped to manufacture the cushions at cost for the Canadian military, citing his brother Blair's enlistment as a motivator. But although tests with a Canadian military captain seemed promising, for some reason development of the cushions never went any further. That same year, Troy made the difficult decision to sell off two of his Ursus suit prototypes. Quote, After 10 years, who'd have thought that I'd ever have to sell my babies? But I have to look at it realistically. They're sitting in my lab doing nothing. Strapped for cash to begin his next armor suit, Troy put the classics up on eBay starting at $5,000. Troy was also beginning to feel his age. He was now pushing his 40s and didn't think his body could handle the rigors of building, testing, and using the bear suit for too much longer. Troy hoped the bids would reach upwards of $200,000, which would be enough to break even on the suits and settle with his debtors. However, the winning amount was just $2,226 USD. In 2005, Troy was working on the most ambitious and mysterious of his inventions to date. He called this the Angel Light, a large ray gun type device that could be used to see through walls. Troy said the idea came to him in a dream. The Angel Light was composed of three large units, which included lasers, optical glass, a microwave, and magnets, along with other parts Troy didn't talk about for security reasons. The function was to identify stealth technology, and Troy mentioned it had the interest of the French government. As far-fetched as this sounds, BayToday.ca claims to have received proof that a former head of Saudi counterintelligence also reached out to Troy for more information on the light. Some skeptics claim it would defy all known principles of physics, making it too implausible an idea to entertain. Nevertheless, trials were already underway at Motorola around the same time to develop similar technology. With Troy's angel light, one could supposedly see so clearly through objects they could read license plate numbers on distant cars. The article went on to say Troy reached out to colleagues at MIT, who stated electromagnetism was the source of its unique properties. As a result, using the angel light could cause some electronics to malfunction. But Troy also warned against using it on living beings, as he had tried it on his hand and temporarily lost feeling in his fingers. When he flashed it on a tank of goldfish, Troy said they died in minutes. Disturbed by this, he disassembled the angel light and stored it away. Troy did resume work on a new model dubbed the God Light in mid-May, trying to find therapeutic applications for the machine. Specifically, Troy wanted to reverse the effects of Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's, as well as a new method of shrinking tumors. Contrary to the debilitating effects of the angel light, Troy explained how the new model helped plants grow faster. He dared anyone looking to call him a fraud with a bet of $20,000 to disprove him. The catch being that if Troy's work was shown to be genuine, the naysayers would owe him 20 grand instead. No one took him up on the offer. Troy explained that the advancements came thanks to an anonymous German engineer who helped out with the electronics engineering over several webcam meetings. For this, Troy employed several shops around North Bay to create specialized parts. He then tried the God Light on various plant subjects, including Colorado blue spruce seeds. He bragged that his device forced them to germinate in a week, as opposed to months as is usually the case. Troy also tested the device on his own hand again to determine its effects and found a tingling pain as though the light would pierce right through. According to Troy, the anonymous German believed the light was causing instant cellular regeneration. Troy said that next, his colleague referred him to a Toronto hospital, where researchers could test it out as a cancer treatment. 
Apparently, the results on lab mice were promising, with cancerous tumors shrinking considerably in control subjects. On the flip side, this removed its transparency-causing abilities, but Troy was hardly concerned given the enormous benefits the godlight could provide. He continued to test the device on himself. As a result of years pounding away at various bear suits, Troy's hands had become seized up and arthritic. After shining the godlight on them, he said they were as good as new. Troy toured around the internet repeating his findings to anyone who would give him a platform, which led to an Ontario man suffering from Parkinson's reaching out. After some convincing, Troy agreed to try the light on him so long as he accepted any liability for what could happen. The man, who felt he had nothing to lose, signed up for three sessions with the Godlight. Troy maintained that the device cured the man completely, but that this caused a falling out with his German colleague who believed it scientifically immoral. Troy argued that the benefits were too important to waste years testing on mice, and continued his experiments on ailing family members. He says that it cured his sister-in-law of a cystic disease, and promised he would try and help anyone who sought him out and understood the risks at no cost to them. For the naysayers out there, and there have been many, who have put it down and called me fraudulent and all the rest of this stuff, I can simply say to you this. When you try to destroy somebody, when you just try to, you know, uh, uh, inject negativity, do your research first. This is been on the web, this article written by the late Novak, Phil Novak, a great man, a great journalist, uh, for two years now. It's in my autobiography. Okay, so for the naysayers out there, let me give you one paragraph that says everything about Godlight. I had Godlight open to the scientific community for a year in my lab. Only one scientist came in that one year, all the way from Japan to investigate Godlight. He not only spent the day investigating Godlight, but actually got underneath it for a session to look at the side effects. This is what he wrote. This is an exact quote. Okay, this is in the article that was covered by the journalist Phil Novak. Okay? For all the naysayers out there. Really simple. William Reich and a PhD at the Chihara Laboratory at the Nara Institute of Science and Technology in Osaka, Japan, has co-invented the XB-2, an unmanned aerial vehicle developed for search and rescue missions. Reichen is a computer scientist with a background in particle physics. And having investigated Godlight at Troy's lab in North Bay, Ontario, Canada, had this to say, and this is a direct quote. I think this is going to revolutionize physics and change the understanding of the concepts of science. What Troy is doing can't be done according to the current theories and models that we have. I know a lot of physicists in Japan who would love to get their hands on this machine. And that's got enough said. Nevertheless, no other reports have since been made about the Godlight's medical use, and the man who is supposedly cured of his Parkinson's has yet to come forward over a decade later. As for the Godlight machine, Troy had thought it would be safe in storage, but when he was unable to pay the facility manager, it got thrown away in the local dump. Troy was furious, but there was little he could do. By mid-2007, Troy was putting the finishing touches on his famous Trojan ballistics armor. It was to be a culmination of all his work on bear suits in the past put towards a good use. Well, I went back to my earlier designs. Uh, I did look at Star Wars. Uh, I looked at Halo, the uh, video game. Uh, and then I start talking to um, the professionals in the field. Um, United States Rangers, Green Beret, uh, Canadian Special Forces, and men in the field. And I said, this is what I'm building. What is it that you need? What, what, what has to be a part of the suit? The brass doesn't understand, and the politicians couldn't spell war, let alone comprehend what you guys got to go through. Troy did his usual tests involving weapons of all types. Using a durable plastic lined with a coat of ceramic over ballistic foam, the suit truly lived up to its fearsome image. Troy's goals for the suit were as follows, quote, By supporting this fund, not only are you supporting our troops in Afghanistan and Iraq and fighting for better protection to decrease the life mortality rate, but you also get the opportunity to win the current Trojan as a testament to your contribution and consideration for our men in the military. Plus, the suit just looks damn cool. Surprisingly, the lightweight armor was only about 40 pounds. It was fitted with knives, mace, a recording system, and even emergency lamps. A clock was also mounted on the crotch. 
As he shopped it around to police departments around Ontario, Troy endured four hours on the road, wearing the suit to test its comfort on long trips. Though it came with a relatively inexpensive price tag of just $2,000, Troy couldn't find any prospective buyers. This caused ripples in his personal life. The burden of designing the suit with no financial recoupment led Troy's family to be evicted back in 2005, putting a strain on his marriage. But Troy didn't let his passion imperil his family. He sold his truck and gave his wife the money, leaving him with little more than the suit in terms of assets. Troy admitted that although he had financial difficulties from living life his way, he wouldn't be able to function doing traditional work. Quote, If I had to go work for the man, after three days I'd just blow my brains out. Knocked down but never defeated, Troy started his website InventorTroy.com around 2008, under the banner of Archangel Armor, Inc. The Flash intro spoke of his many accomplishments, and promised a new television show featuring Troy alongside his friend Jeff would premiere in the future. This Big Bang reality show, as it was to be called, would introduce audiences to Troy's past inventions, get an inside look at his lab, and demonstrate how fans could start building their own suits of armor. Sadly, this never materialized and little information exists about it online. Three years later, Troy came out with a memoir called Bear Man, the Troy Hurtubi Saga. This seems to be out of print, and there are no electronic editions available. Troy started a GoFundMe in 2016 to raise $700,000 to build a new suit and produce a sequel to Project Grizzly, supported by the original film's cinematographer. In the meantime, Troy continued tinkering with his light-based inventions. The result was a new model he called the R-Lite, touting its regenerative properties as like the LED treatments for diabetes studied by Johns Hopkins University. Quote, What I did is spend thousands and thousands of hours researching all of the principles that they are using and I put it together in one machine. So in this machine is more than just light. You have ultrasonic waves, you have over 200,000 volts of open electricity, magnetic vortexes and magnetic fields, you've got sonar, you have six different kinds of lasers. Troy believed it could reverse male pattern baldness and help plants grow. His tests involved corn seeds in a dark, sandy environment, ordinarily inhospitable to plant life, and within days, Troy claimed they rapidly sprouted. Troy also touted that his r light had restored part of he and his son's receding hairlines. But, as so often happened before, Troy fell short of finding the investors he needed to take his prototype to the next level. To shore up some cash, he tried his hand at writing once again with a self-published ebook called Shards of Time, which offered his personal reflections on life, religion, and philosophy. It's unknown how well this novel sold. In 2017, Troy was back at work testing out various substances like Vulcanite H, a material purported to be lighter but stronger than steel. This time, he shared his discoveries in a series of YouTube videos demonstrating the product's unique properties. What you're going to see is going to blow your mind away. It's my greatest innovation in my life. It's called Vulcanite H. I first started polymer-based materials 22 years ago when I first invented Hertzy. And since then, I have, well, let's take a look. Hertzy, Achilles, the FP-13, the 300, and 57 other formulas, together with 7,139 test samples to date before I got to Vulcanite H. Perseverance and imagination and research. What you're going to witness here today is a bend test. I'm going to show the pros of Vulcanite H, and I'm hoping the industry asks me one simple thing. I'm hoping this demonstration does nothing more than open the door to say, Mr. Hercules, Please send the samples. Now, let's take a look at something spectacular. Vulcanite H, you saw it is fireproof. It's acid proof. Acid has no effect on it. It's UV resistant. It has a weight to strength ratio. 10 cell tests are gonna prove that. That's all I want. But on a bend test, look at that. Look at it coming back already. Look at, do you see any splits, people? Do you see any? Do you see a tear? I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear that open for you so you can see. And it's gonna come back to its original shape. I mean, people, holy jeez, I'm, I'm shaking, I'm shaking. I'm, I, I can't believe I did that, I beat it. People, I nearly beat it straight up. 
60% lighter and I hit 375 PSI and the big daddy there it is folks here one more time so you see there's 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 no here it is look that's three plate that the weight difference on this is staggering 357 grams against my 136 grams. I'm 60% lighter. Look at it already coming back. Look, look, look. Jeez, oh, I've got to. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. Let me split this out here. Follow the camera. So you see it? There it is, folks. I'm telling you, people, I'm working in my living room. You think I'm joking? I'm working in my living room. And that's what I'm trying to say to the industry. If it ever gets your way, folks, you ask any material scientist under the conditions I'm working, I'm telling you, it's Spock. Bare skins and stone knives. You put this in a lab, you put this under uh, uh, proper industrial, uh, 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 mechanized uh, machinery where it's done uniform and you're gonna increase the strength and the properties of Vulcan IH by at least 20%. Could you comprehend that? Despite this formidable sales pitch, Troy was unable to properly market his Vulcanite H to anyone who could finally help him catch a break. It seemed his inventions would never get the attention he believed they deserved. 2018 proved to be an especially difficult year for Troy. In an interview with the Sudbury Star, he lamented, quote, I'm the biggest failure you've ever looked at. Every single one of my inventions, every single one of my writings, I gave it my best shot, fell, stood up, and said, F you, let's go again. And still, not one of them has ever found a market. Even so, Troy never stopped wondering. He had plans for an invention called Pandora's Box, which would supposedly capture dark matter. Quote, they're flying through us right now, dark particles. Science already knows that. Buddy in the wheelchair, Hawking, they all know it's there. They just can't capture. They've tried. Hundreds of millions of dollars they've spent. They've had some stuff underground that are miles underneath. Hundred million dollars trying to catch this dark particle. I'm going to catch it with Pandora's box, you dummies. As he got older, Troy was given counsel by his son Brett, who admired his father but feared he was too unfocused to follow through with his projects. But Troy remained steadfast. Quote, What am I supposed to do? Is the bear man supposed to work at Tim Hortons? Am I supposed to go on welfare? F that. I'm a warrior, and I mean that. In June 2018, Troy was feeling the stress from the hardships of his pioneering lifestyle. He was forced to pawn his newest bear suit and scale back on his ideas. Additionally, he couldn't get the funding needed to film the sequel to Project Grizzly, where he had hoped to finally encounter a grizzly bear on film. Another recent bankruptcy left him especially depressed, and he temporarily moved back in with his mother to clear his head. On June 17, 2018, Troy went home to see his wife. But when no one answered the door, he desperately broke in and looked around for her. Not finding anyone at home, he got in his car and headed for Highway 17 outside North Bay. Shortly after 1pm, Troy would wind up in a head-on collision with a gas tanker truck. While the trucker escaped unharmed, the massive fireball that shot out of Troy's Chevy Cavalier made his own escape impossible. And so, Troy Herchibes met his end, age 54, leaving behind his wife and son and dozens of inventions. Despite his status as a well-loved folk hero, the family opted to keep memorial services private. For all of Troy's talents, his outlandish but nearly workable theories never courted the serious attention he wanted for them. Troy often bemoaned that out-of-context editing on video made him seem crazier than he was. While it's true that some of his later inventions pushed the boundaries of what constitutes hard science, his more grounded inventions like Firepaste did seem to have worked. What stings about this anomaly is the loss of everything Troy had thought of but never got the chance to see through. Forgotten websites are the only footprint we have of certain proposals, like OSEC Blue, the Apache Longarm, or the EMS Pod. Canada lost a truly brilliant individual in Troy Herchibes, who, despite no formal scientific training, brought much delight to others thanks to his compelling and often hilarious experiments. We can only hope that Troy will be vindicated in his life's work one day, whether it's through professionally designed bear suits or the promising qualities of his signature lost formula for fire paste. This is an intelligent animal, far exceeds the ape in intelligence. This is his territory. He'll outdo Ben Johnson on a 100 meter spread. This motherfucker can do 100 meters at a dead standstill on rough terrain in 6.3 seconds. If this thing's hunting you, you won't even see it. 
You won't see him, you won't hear him. He'll come up behind you, snap your neck, then eat your ass out first.